Welcome to Turku Satanalle number six. It's the sixth time we are, you know, having Satan in the city. And lots of black metal to go with. Here we have Mr. Werewolf, the man behind Satanic War Master, which I guess is a known band to many of you there. And those who don't know this guy or band yet, we can enlighten you a little bit. Welcome to Rauta, Mr. Werewolf. How has your weekend been with the beer and bands and all that stuff? Thank you for having me. So far, it's been pretty wet. Still not wet enough. So hopefully tonight we're gonna change that. So there was a quite a big of audience yesterday, and you basically on tonight with all the stuff. So what was your impression of the Turku Satanalle virginity, so to speak? Uh, it was. I was surprised with the turnout. It was amazing concerning that it was a Finnish show. Even though our show uh, set got sh got cut short because of the schedule stretching, it was still pretty intense and it seemed like the audience was into it, so what the hell. So you were headlining Friday and that is kind of not common for a Finnish band to headline in a Finnish festival. But then again, you have a huge audience and especially huge following in social media, which is very uncommon for the kind of underground black metal such as yours. Can you tell what the fuck is going on with your band? What, what is the following going on? How, how has it begun? And I don't know. Well, at least as for Turku, the funny fact is that we played our first show ever here in 2004. And uh, it's kind of interesting to see the progression we've made in the past 14 years that we started out playing live here and now we're already headlining here in Turku, which is kind of also my one of my favorite places to play in Finland because of all my comrades here and everything. As for the social media stuff, I always took it as only as a reflection of doing something right with my music or something. I don't know. You are most of the most phenomenal black metal artists in Finland and I think that many people will actually find it kind of like contradictive because they would like to see black metal as kind of a cult that you cannot be a popular or you will be a sold out or whatever or you have a lots of compromises going on but you have always been really kind of a straightforward and open with your uh, mindset your ideology and you are known as a person with a skill with uh, tongue and language. So do you think this is one of the reasons to your popularity and following? Well, it's obviously hard for me to analyze it myself, but as with any kind of music, it always attracts a lot of people who are more into the following of a dogmatic kind of a mindset, which is not uncommon in black metal either. And especially in Finnish black metal, because, I mean, I can observe it from such a close distance. There's a lot of really dogmatic people who need this kind of a dogma around the music to make themselves even understand it. For myself, it has never been about that, because as a Satanist, you're never meant to follow, you're meant to lead. And with my music, I'm not following a dogma, I'm setting my own rules for my own music and making my own expression out of it and not just trying to follow because that's not what any kind of music should be about. That is kind of a path to failure to follow rather than lead. Exactly. So you're known as a person with a lot of uh, charisma. You are known for your witty remarks both on the social media as well as, you know, face to face. But you're also a skilled musician when it comes to composing, you know, just, you know, riffs and also lyrics. And I'm not going to sweet talk you here, but just, you know, give the kind of audience the idea that what is going on. You have a great track record with many bands and all that stuff. You have a, your own label. The thing is, how can you manage all that stuff? And, and where does your inspiration come to, you know, lead? It has never been a hobby for me. Even from a young age, I realized that it was more important to work 
with a thing that is actually important for you rather than just earn a living. The part that involves like earning a living out of it came much later, but for me, it's always been that it's it's been my destiny to make my life's work out of it. And for some peculiar reason, it also actually manages to bring whatever food is on the table. And I would rather say that if you actually do things with your whole heart, then the payoff is also bigger. Maybe not, maybe not financially, but like, Considering all the aspects of like fulfillment, it all adds adds up into something greater. So that can be clearly seen, uh, despite your kind of uh, having this, how to put it, in a way that people should understand. You have this habit of being kind of a fool on social media. You don't take yourself too seriously. But when it comes to your music and the ideology and all that stuff, you're hundred ten percent serious. Am I correct? Yes, of course. So how do you combine these things and what do you tell those who accuse of you being, uh, I don't know, double standards or fool or whatever? What is your view or answer to this? There is actually a term for people who try to pretend that they're serious about everything and try to portray like some kind of a face that you're supposed to have, especially in like context to some kind of a aesthetic that revolves around well black metal especially there is a, there is a certain word for people like that they're called posers so posers leave the hole yep get the fuck out of here so you've been uh, involved in not just only black metal but you've been doing your own heavy metal as well you've been doing all kind of uh, side projects and you basically uh, had your first hard training or so to speak, you know, filling the shoes or making the name with Horna. Yeah. But in a ways you've already kind of a succeeded them in a way of, you know, being Satan Warmaster and a world known band. How did that happen? I mean, at that time when I joined Horna, it was of course, since we were from the same city and I was already doing my own own music at that time also, but because of the circumstances and everything, I was actually joined the band, and that was a good lesson in my life. But of course, I always had the ambition to like represent myself rather than, especially, I mean, with Horna, it was always a really awkward situation because I had to be the front man, even though I didn't influence the music or the lyrics that much. So it was a natural progression that I focused more on my own creations. So I, I left the band in. 2001. So Satan Warmaster is your show, but how much the other guys have to say in the band, whether it's about lyrics or music or just, you know, way to show on the road? Just like in life in general, there should be no democracy. So it's all the way dictatorship. Well, it's the one with the highest merits sets the, sets the basic tone. My way or the highway? And if If bands can be in the kind of a situation where Satanic Warmaster is now, that I have found people that share the vision, the vision and vision. they know the higher goal that we're heading for, and they know what's it about, then there is no conflict and there is no. What, what would be that higher goal? The uh, manifestation of Satan on Earth. What is the manifestation of Satan, and what does Satan to you mean? Satan means pride, never submitting to the rules that the uh, human society dictates. Arrogance. Is Satan more than just rebellion and a manifestation of humans' desires to be free? Yeah, of course it's more. It's the initial... The initial touch of Satan is of course in many cases rebellion but it evolves into wisdom, into strength, into power and the ability to conquer. 
So we have had a talk with you on, like as a private person, of course, not so much as a band, but I think this kind of needs a little bit of enlightenment. So we have had talk about science and and uh, that related to kind of our spiritual ways to see things. You've been seen even as a anti-science person. Is this a true or is it just a false understanding? In a way, it's not a false understanding like all human creations the scientific community is corrupt as with all bigger institutions that that dictate the way people think and how they teach children and everything just like with the church before now science is the new church and it has power that maybe no human creation should have so what is your relation to atheism Uh, well, I'm a really spiritual person myself, so... That's why I'm asking. I personally... I can understand the... the meaning of atheism in a way that it's... for a common man, it's... the final stage of rejecting false spirituality, but then again, the actual step to finding your own spirituality, that's something that can never be a mass movement or anything like that because it's always personal so well in black metal nihilism and uh, you know especially uh, Nietzsche's teachings or writings have meant a lot and for some people it's kind of a be all end of solution you know be nihilistic there is no end there is no meaning to this life there is nothing when we die and all that stuff but for spiritual people there is always kind of a second chance or passage to new world yeah, or instead on, of on, what, what do you on what this, is on this earthly life that we have to spend Nietzsche was correct that when it comes to this life it doesn't matter it, when it ends it ends and whatever comes afterwards it doesn't really give you anything or take anything out of the life we have here but So you, you the life here it's it's pretty fucking meaningless. So the bills we get here uh, do they have any meaning in the life next or is there anything? I mean some people believe in karma and stuff like that but even if if it is true it doesn't matter at this time and when we're here it doesn't matter. What is your way of uh, or seeing things or opinion about mass religions? Good or bad or meaningless? Well, all the... Well, I can only speak from a perspective of a Western citizen of a European country, but naturally all the Semitic religions have done a lot of damage for for a continent that could be much greater, but then again, if Europe was so weak to let Christians and Jews and Muslims ruin it, so be it. So is it kind of like a survival of the fittest thing in a respect of science, or is it like a, we should have it better way, but too bad we had to give up to these kind of douchebag religions? I mean, I don't care. So it's, it doesn't matter? It doesn't matter to me. It it never ruined my world, but for a lot of people, it could be much better if they realized the damage that has been done. But that's their problem. So, talking about a little bit of politics as well, you've been known for kind of a open-minded about it, but you also kind of try to keep at least some ways things you know as personal uh, which are not related to the band can we ask you what is your political stance or does it have any meaning right wing left wing neutral ways i mean the whole spectrum of political thinking in terms of left and right the whole like dialogue about the matter is already so fucked up like leftists whatever they are, are pointing fingers at people being Nazis, which is the other left. So it's basically like... Socialism against socialism. It's just like a whirlwind 
at the left, it doesn't have anything to do with like actual reason or anything. That's why I prefer to keep as far of it as possible. If I would have my own, if I would have to describe my own political political views, it would be most likely anarchism and tribalism and traditionalism and as many like guns as I would be able to get for which the legislation in Finland should be a bit more relaxed but yeah do you think Trump is doing the right thing in order to uh, stir things up when with, with guns legislation and giving like people like people should defend you know against guns with more guns and eventually people would be you know more shot dead I mean the gun thing in the United States has always been the same it does it doesn't have anything to do with Trump whatsoever I mean and in a way especially there where the things are so that there are a lot of guns the only way to like keep it under control is to have more guns that's a fact because if the the criminals will always get guns and if the normal people are not allowed to have guns then the criminals will still have the guns so Does the same apply to drugs and other elements of abuse as well? Yeah, of course. What is your stance with drugs or uh, subjects of abuse? Only booze or anything else? I mean, it's not abuse if you do it right. So it's a way of passage in a way? Yeah. So let's talk a little bit of uh, your uh, Satanism. How religious or strong in spiritual nature it is to you? It's everything I have. It's the only thing I have in a spiritual sense that I I feel that the powers that channel through me, that's Satan. Are you considered as a religious black metal band? I don't care. What do you think about this movement? Because I mean like there's been... You, you know me well enough to know that people can consider Satanic Warmaster or me as whatever they fucking please. They will still never know the half of it, and it, it doesn't matter. It, they just need to, if they need to put me in a box just to figure it out, do as you please. But I, I don't give, give a flying fuck because they never know me. But there are fans who actually have tattooed your face on their like uh, skin. Is that a level of ridiculousness or ultimate respect of uh, our show of fandom? Well, when you become a rocker. There's always a risk that someone tattoos your fucking face on their arm. But there isn't nothing bad about it. No, oh, it's fine. What is more important to you? Uh, recording new songs with lyrics and all that stuff or representing that to the audience on stage? I mean, I've always underlined the fact that when Satanic Warmaster plays live, it's a total compromise. I always made the music just for myself and I'm only doing it out of the respect for the fans, but for myself, It's it's not vital in any way. I initially made all the songs and everything for myself the way I wanted it to be and for myself to enjoy. But since so many others enjoyed it too, out of respect, I will bring it to them too. But it's it's not important in any way. So if uh, you know uh, people like Andy Farr or whatever would ruin your tours or gigs, it wouldn't matter. No, not for me. It hurt. I mean, for my fans, I can imagine it's really upsetting. But it's it's it doesn't hurt me at all. Do you think uh, this kind of uh, gig cancellations or tour cancellations, such as Tage, would it mean black metal being more kind of dangerous again and anti-safe space, or is it just meaningless? Are they victims or are they the winners? In a way, I, I just feel awkward about the fact that black metal bands are pulled into this kind of a game that has nothing to do with the music. Even even the bands that are actually preaching or singing about topics that are maybe against the worldview of Antifa, whatever that that means. Still, it's... I, 
have a really hard time understanding it whatsoever. And it, even though it has happened for me too, but I just don't get it because it's it's just a whole. It's so intellectually dishonest from the side of those who try to stop the bands from playing and everything. And it's like I have never understood like what what the goal is there, and it's it's weird. So to conclude this interview, in a way, um, what lies in a near future for Satanic Warmaster? We're going to play one more show this spring in Steelfest in Finland. And after that, we're gonna stop playing live for now. Hopefully, I've been composing new material and maybe even this year we can start the recordings of the new album. But as with stuff like this, things always change, but that's the initial plan. And hopefully in the coming couple of years, we'll have a new album ready, but we'll see. And to further to conclude, uh, what are what is the situation with your other bands and projects, which are active and which are not? Uh, well, we stopped Armor already a couple of years ago. We played the last show in the United States. That was the end of Armor. And the uh, the True Werewolf album, Devil Crisis. We just finished the final mix after six years of working on it. So hopefully that will be released this year. And most likely it will. We're all already working on the cover art and everything, and that's pretty much all there is on the table right now. I mean, with Werewolf Records, I'm of course releasing some new material, but that will be another story. All right. And one last question: Should you have one uh, thought of wisdom? to give to the audience who have actually managed to do all the way this interview so far what is your what are your words so let's go to the prison rather than you know going whatever we thank you for watching this great interview or not so great as always subscribe to the channel check out the material of a satanic war master get your shit done and don't be a fool poser or a pussy route out check it out <laughs>